fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, I'm not in Rotherham at my office today, I'm in Sheffield at Dennis's office while he's in China at the IBF convention. Uh, I'm not going to say what all the uh, boxing promoters thought about Joshua's uh, boss, but it's private, isn't it? But, uh, Oh, how the mighty have fallen! Right, one thing I love about coming up here, do you know what it is? Freebies. I love freebies. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these on. Woo! 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 I wonder what trainers Porky's ended up scrounging this time. And I'm going to uh, do a video regarding the weekend's events. Uh, and we'll have, a, we'll have a chat about boxing and we'll do a little bit about Dennis's show on July the 5th which is four week this Friday so it's all looking good uh, so two seconds let me just get me file <coughs> few things down. Uh, I listened to Ultra Tech Sports. Ultra Tech Sports, I'm a big Ultra Tech Sports fan. Ultra Tech Sports Raw. I like Ultra Tech, I like uh, the New Age Podfather, massive fan of that and I like uh, shout out to New Age Pod, at the New Age Pod, Terry Chapman Dharma, Andy and Martin. I like uh, Boxing Asylum, all them boys, shout out Smido, Ozzy Smith, uh, Steve Wellings, Tommy the Guru Allen, is Tommy still on there? All them boys, Andy Patterson, all good boxing people, Dave the Hater Lowback, I like him, I think he's funny, they all bring different things to the table don't they? Uh, if there's any I've missed I do apologise. Uh, Aha! Right. Here we go, boys and girls. Here we go. Uh, well, that many things. If you put the time into your channels, all you people out there who are wanting to, to, to do a YouTube channel, my advice is you've got to put your time in. I try and put four hours in a day, but I have other things to do. But lately it's been coming more and more it's been becoming like 16 hours because I want to give it a big push because we've got a few things lined up now people can say ah oh, Porky you're bullshitting you're bullshitting I don't bullshit about my channel but people are going to see what's happening in the next couple of months and it's all looking good isn't it it's all pointing towards it's all pointing towards we're doing it full time. Uh, I think this is the sheet of paper I was looking for in the last video. Jesus, found it. Uh, put that there. So, if there's any secretary, any women out there who want to be interviewed by Porky for a PA job, get your CV sent to me, porkycorner at mail.com, 10 quid an hour. We're going to be looking for a few of you in the next six months because Michelle in that other office there, she's never going to leave Dennis for me, is she? So, <laughs> Dennis won't be able to cope with Arthur. Right. Here we go. Uh, here we 
and see you come in third round that don't want the fight for three years. year. Oh, I've done that video, I've done that video. Uh, what did we think about the Anthony Joshua loss? I did a video about it, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do one today. I'll probably do a, more, a few more this week regarding it because it's massive news in boxing. It has a knock-on effect for everybody, doesn't it? Really. Do you know what I've noticed about training shoes? Right, when you get a pair of trainers and you pay X amount for them. You're happy, aren't you? You're walking about, aren't you, in the day looking at them all the time, don't you? And you think, these feel really great on. Well, let me tell you this. You may, there may not be much money for people like me in the boxing industry. And that don't bother me. Because I love it that much, but... You know when you get perks? What do you reckon? Old Porky Boy with his freebies. Now, when I tell you... Next month, or next couple of months, <laughs> when you see what I will be getting for free, people are going to collapse, let me tell you. They're going to collapse all you haters, but I know all you two boxing fans are going to think, go on Porky, it's nice to get a few perks, isn't it? So I do put a lot of effort in with this channel, don't I? I don't know if I like these. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if these trainers are me. No, I don't think they are. But I'll take them anyway. It's like something out of Starsky and Starsky and Hutch. It's like Starsky and Hutch, isn't it? They used to wear these, didn't they? Or Starsky used to wear a pair of these, didn't he? Oh. I don't know. I don't know if these are me. I don't know if these trainers are me, to be honest. Let's see if we can get them on here. No, I don't need to me, but, well, we have a rule, don't we? Dennis shouldn't leave anything in a size 8, which is the same size he is, knocking about in office, because I will scoop it up when I am on patrol. So, Den, thanks for your trainers. Uh, let's have a look. But it's all looking good. Right, Dillian White, Tyson Fury, that's not going to happen is it, not going to happen that, uh, Tyson says things for effect doesn't he, but right we're all in order, we're all in order now, we're good to go, and action, hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing, shout out to Helen at Ireland, to my Irish radio, Nice to speak with you at the weekend. Shout out to my mate Steve Ra Steve Rafe, uh, film producer, boxing promoter. Yes, Steve, I will do a podcast with you, and I will come up and see you in Newcastle. Then I'll go see my pal Raymond in Hartlepool and Glen McCrory. He's up there, and we'll have a night out. So yes, Steve, I will do the podcast uh, thing with you, and uh, anything to get our channel out there and. Talk boxing with a good boxing man, so thank you very much, Steve, for the offer. Right, we're going to call this video The Inquest, right? Now, when you get beat up, I mean, Joshua just didn't, it weren't a close decision, was it? I mean, he got dropped four times, so why would you need a rematch, rematch for that? Now, when Boote and Carl Froch fought, we all know what Carl Froch did to Boote, don't we? And Eddie Hearn went on TV after and he said, why would we even need a rematch for this? Why would you need it? And the same can ha be happen with Andy Ruiz, because Andy Ruiz not only beat him up, he dropped him four times and made him quit. And what leaves a bad taste in my mouth about that is this. Joshua were nice as pie after. He were nice as pie after. Well, where, where were the bad man? Where, where were Joshua the bad man? Where were the big sullen bad guy? The guy up here that, uh, you know, when, when I, when I uh, were up at AJ Hobson's scrapyard, just a few doors down from AJ's scrapyard, up here, back at EIS, where Joshua trains, there's a cafe, it's owned by Adam Etchett's, his uncle. 
I were in there and Joshua were in there and I, he looked over and I looked over at him and I, and I thought, yeah. I looked at him, I thought, you know, you, you're a big bully. Big bullying, sullen bully. Everywhere you go, you've got them, your boys with you. Big bully. That's what I thought. Now, they were ordering a chicken and chips dinner from there. It's a bit like, a bit like a Frey Bentus type of thing with chips, that kind of thing, a bit of veg. But yet yeah, that day, because I went on Twitter to see what he did that day, he put a tweet out of a big bowl of fruit. A big bowl of fruit. That picture went out right within 30 minutes of him eating that dinner. And it were, it, it were in his flat in London or whatever. It weren't up here at EIS. So as far as I'm concerned, Joshua doesn't even run his Twitter. Do you know what I mean? That's the type of fraud I have a problem with. I've got big problems with things like that. And when he's coming back and he's being humble and all that, it reminded me of Lennox Lewis bashing Mike Tyson up. And afterwards he's saying, you're, you're, you're a masterful boxer, Lennox, and all that, and being so humble in defeat and all that. Now, who should say he's even going to want that rematch, but with the size that Split has got for the rematch, yeah, he'll probably take it. But you've got to look at it like this. You've got to look at it like this. Parker beat Ruiz. Ruiz beat Joshua, but yet Parker lost to Joshua. Parker wasn't allowed to go to work against Joshua because you're in England where Eddie Hearn can perform magic tricks with you outside of the ring, and I'm talking referees and judges. We see it all the time, don't we? For example, Andy Ruiz were down on one of the judges scorecards in the round he knocked Joshua out. So if Joshua stays on his feet to end at fight, he wins, doesn't he, on that judges scorecard. What are the other two judges, I don't know, but you can always say that one of the judges out of the three has been got at. That's my opinion. I'm not saying it's a case of brown envelopes, but it's boxing, isn't it? They're screaming for that match in the UK, but yet, yeah, I thought America were where it were at. I thought they were going to grow Joshua in America. That's the chink in the armour. That's where Joshua's dad had a go at Eddie Hearn. They didn't want to go to America. It was all Eddie Hearn's idea. He's pushed the boat out there to go to America to get the dad's own money. Thinking about himself, for example. We've got bodyguards crying because they're thinking about their own self. We've got Freddie Cunningham, the manager, upset. We've got all them other little gimps who knock around with him, like Frank Smith. I'm speechless, I'm depressed. Why are they depressed? They're not in ring. We've got Clarissa Shields crying, because she knows that it's, it's now possible that she's not going to fight Savannah Marshall on a Joshua undercard. And Joshua will have been telling her, you're going to get paid, you're going to get paid, I'm going to look after you, it's my show, I run the show. They're not in control now. They're on the outside looking in. They've not got a belt. Mark my words now, in the next few months you're going to hear Eddie Hearn threaten legal action against Al Heyman, it's going to go back and forward, legal letters, they're going to have solicitors and lawyers on retainers, back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. And they're just going to grow this Ruiz rematch now. It's not Wilder Fury, it's Joshua Ruiz now. They are desperate to get Ruiz to England. And if that kid comes to England, Andy Ruiz, I'm telling you now, 50% of that support at Wembley Stadium will be for Andy Ruiz. Because they're going to do their best to get them belts off Andy Ruiz. I am telling you now, sure as eggs are eggs, they're going to do their best to get them belts off that kid. A lot of people were cheering for Andy Ruiz. I was. But we haven't got a problem with Joshua itself because it's, it's how he's been manufactured. Joshua might be a nice guy, we don't know, do we? I don't know him. It's how they've gone about the business. How they've gone about it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I'm 50 year old next year and I want to see good fights. I could, be drop, I could drop dead at any minute, touch wood. 50 next year. Now... We're all cheering for Ruiz, not because of Joshua's attitude, it's because of Eddie Earn, how he's gone about the business. 
how they've gone about insulting people like Shelley Finko, Frank Warren, Lou DiBella, Al Heyman. These are big dogs in boxing, Lou DiBella. I mean, come on. He signed all Olympians, American Olympians, didn't he, after Australian Olympics? Jermaine Taylor, Seb Judah, all them boys. Lou DiBella is a big dog in America. He, own, he owns a baseball team in Florida. He is a big dog. He might even own two. Or have shares in one of them and own another. He's a big dog, Lou DiBella. Other big dogs. Frank Warren, all of, all of fame promoter. Al Heyman. <laughs> Jesus. Al Heyman. Put me with a Pacquiao on. May, you know, he put me with a Hatton on. And trust me, I know people that that know certain people in boxing in America and you know these are big dogs these are big big dogs you know and that they are not Shelly Finkel God, he, he, he was Mike Tyson's manager for years he was dealing with uh, Bill Caton and Jim Jacobs and you know and all, all them kind of people and Custy Amato and Tyson's trainer and look they are big dogs and they've got Eddie Hearn, who, let's face it, Eddie Hearn went to a private school, didn't he, in, uh, in Essex, in Brentwood, with Frank Lampard, who was from Money as well. Now, I've had emails of Eddie Hearn and he'll say things like, oh, that's very funny, that porky. You, 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 must, be one at fa you must be one at faces now. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? You must be one at faces. Fuck, one at faces and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get to America, I'm going to plot up, and plot up, and yeah, he'll be caked, and uh, go on my son, and cheeky Nando's, why is Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn coming out with all that Essex crap, he thinks he's one at Richardson's, doesn't he, is he Eddie Richardson, and not Eddie Hearn, I mean, <laughs> do you see where I'm coming from, the guy's behaving like he's an OG, he's not a fucking OG, he's a kid, Oh, we used to sell double glazing just like I used to do when I was a teenager. I used to sell double glazing for EYG windows of Hull. Now he's just a he's just a spoiled brat, isn't he? That's all he is. He got lucky with Audley Harrison. He got Audley walking around with these t-shirts on. Yes, I can. And David A were walking around with t-shirts on that said, "No, you can't." Wow. And we all paid 15 quid to watch it, didn't we? Well, since then, that was Eddie Hearn's first pay-per-view. The 28th pay-per-view was the other night, the Joshua one, which was a good pay-per-view. So, Dillian White's the 29th pay-per-view. So, Eddie Hearn's had a good run, hasn't he? And he'll get more pay-per-views. But, he's based his business around Anthony Joshua milking the cow's udder. And it all came home to roost, didn't it? Dillian White had Joshua rocked in his first pay-per-view, Joshua's first pay-per-view, and his shoulder went. Dillian White would have took him out. After that, they had to be very careful what they did with him. They got a gift against Charlie Martin, Brazil and Molina. They were gifts as well. The Charlie Martin, gift. Brazil, gift. Molina, gifts. Where do you go after that? A guy in his 42nd year, 18 month on the settee, in his 69th fight, and he'd already got four losses on his record, coming off a of schooling mentally in his back garden of Tyson Fury. Vladimir Klitschko, life and death. Vladimir dropped him, he had nothing left after that, he could not pull the trigger, he allowed Joshua to fight again. So they got lucky again, so they got lucky. With Dillian White, they got lucky against Vladimir. Joseph Parker fight. Tackham fight. Terrible stoppage in the Tackham fight. The other one, the Joseph Parker fight, the referee wouldn't let Parker go to work. Then we have the Povetkin fight where he got rocked against Povetkin but he wasn't big enough to finish the job. So all the signs were there but still they kept going to the well. And taking the piss out fans, the talking fury, the talking wilder. But we get Andy Ruiz after Miller, after the Miller knockback because of the drug situation. So we get Ruiz. Ruiz 
did his job. He just fought like he always fights, but the, the thing is, you see, Joshua hasn't got it in his arsenal to deal with people like that. He's a big, strong athlete. It's like Dave Allen says, he's a big, strong athlete. Dave Allen sat with me in my front room one day, right, and, and we sat speaking to Boxing Asylum, and Dave Allen said, and I quote, Joshua is big and hollow. And he could he could he could he could walk him in the ring when he wanted to, but he's an athlete. He broke Davy's nose five times. They've done over 500 rounds, but Dave's never hit the deck once. Daniel Debar, Dave couldn't do nothing with him. He couldn't do nothing with Joe Joyce as well. They're big units. Joshua won't want to fight them guys. But let me tell you this, David, out of all them rounds and all them sessions he did with Joshua, he had one session where. He did well against Joshua, and Joshua didn't like it. David spun him a couple of times and gave him a whack on bum, and he was like, Rob, Rob, tell him. That's a true story. Go on, Boxing Asylum. The bottom line is Dave Allen did well against Joshua in one sparring session out of probably, I don't know. He probably had 100 sessions with Joshua, 100 sessions, and he had one session where he were on top. So as far as I'm concerned, it is what it is, isn't it? Joshua were there to be beat, Ruiz turned up and he ain't any better than, he, than when he fought Parker, he just did his job. Parker wasn't allowed to do his job. Do you understand? Since Klitschko dropped Joshua, he's, got, he's been in a safety first mode. Now, when he went to finish Ruiz off in that third round, if that referee had gone, no, are you all right, Andy? And he, and he thought, no, I'll stop this. We won't be having this conversation now, me and all hardcore boxing fans, and all you haters as well. You're a hater, Parker. You're a hater for saying that. No, I'm not a hater. I'm a realist. They've had their day in the sun. I'm gonna have my fucking day now. And let me tell you this: them bastards, and that's what they are, pure bastards, have fucking abused boxing fans. For fucking a good few years now with pay-per-view stubble. Do you think I'm just gonna fucking let that go? And paying out all that money that I paid out for them two billboards, eh? Have you any idea how much it costs for two billboards like that? Unbelievable. All them fucking bastards who ripped that billboard down up at Sheffield United ground after I paid all that money, eh? All them all them trolls. Because they don't like me and they like Eddie Earn, they ripped that billboard down. Well, you didn't rip that other fucking one down, did you? That I had in Doncaster, eh? You didn't rip that one down, did you? Well, let me tell you this. It's all coming to home to roost, isn't it, now, about what's happened. Podcasts. They've been getting favours from Eddie Earn. Ultra Tech Sports Lows reported on it. 78 Sports TV have been getting concessions from Frank Smith. Press passes and things like that, things that I can't get. Right? Yeah, I can get them for shows up here and that, but I'm not going to get a matchroom one, am I? Or a Sky Show. Because they don't want to answer proper questions. They don't want to answer them. I'm going to ask them about Stubborn. What? Who was the first op choice opponent for Joshua to fight last time? Which opponents were not back? What were the what do all the emails say about the wild wilder business and things like that? Because I'm starting to think now that after Joshua said that he didn't want to have any more fights like the Vladimir Klitschko one, that it's just about money. Now that Joshua's been beat, he'll not be bothered about fighting any about fighting Ruiz again and getting his ass kicked. He'll want to fight Wilder and Fury. They all come to the table once they've been beat because they think, well, we got over it. I didn't die. I, anybody can be humiliated for millions and millions of pounds, can't they? People sell their souls for money. That's what they do. That's how the game works. I don't know if I like look of these trainers, then, but I'm going to have them anyway. So unlucky, don't leave them lying around in future. Right. So look, how many minutes we've got left here? Five more minutes, and it needs to be turned off. Right. So that's how I look at it. Right. We wouldn't be having this conversation now, would we? If uh, if that referee had stopped that fight in third round, people like me and all and all. 
all people like me, YouTubers, would all be saying, well, referee, we're going to stop it, and Joshua would have got to him anyway, blah de blah. That's what we'd be saying. Andy Ruiz wouldn't be Andy Ruiz, a four belt holder, would he? And Al Heyman wouldn't have all five belts, because let me tell you this, do you think, for one minute that Al Heyman is going to let Eddie Hearn have a rematch with Ruiz. Do you think that? Do you think that's going to happen? No, 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 no. Boxing don't work like that. If it did, lawyers wouldn't be making millions and millions and millions of pounds. You know, millions and millions. And we wouldn't have people like these sort of people here, the British Boxing Board of Control. Send, send, sending, uh, sending letters where you've got to get your legal people involved. Listen, it's an industry controlled by money. You've got promoters and you've got lawyers. They're the ones that make the money. And you've got sanctioning bodies like British Boxing Board of Control, Commonwealth Council, WBA, WBC, IBF, IBO. WBA, you've got five governing, governing bodies there. Four of them are called mandatories all the time. Now, these rules are there to be manipulated. Now, this is how I look at it now. This is what I think is going to happen. I've got a theory on it, and I'm going to share it with you. This is what I think. I think that the rematch won't happen. I think that it won't happen at all. At all. I just don't think it's going to happen. I just don't think for one minute that they're going to let it happen. It's just my opinion and I'm entitled to it. I think that if it if it goes to a rematch, it might not be in England. Joshua will only want to fight in England now. He'll want to get through 12 rounds and hope that the referee does him a favour and the judges. That's what's going to happen now. It's going to go back and forward, back for we legal, we legal people. But I just don't think it's going to happen, that rematch, at all, unless they offer mega money. I mean, Joshua might have it in a contract that he gets X amount, but that, that's there to be negotiated. They're on the outside looking in now, and like I said, you know when you go all the way to the top and you rub people's noses in it? You know, people like Eddie Hearn. Now, I have a love-hate rela love relationship with Eddie Hearn. One minute I love him, the next minute I fucking hate him, right? You've got an abuse of power, and he's abused the fans. He's abused the fans, hasn't he? And he has also abused boxing. You don't get away with doing things like that. You can't get away with that. It don't work like that. Boxing don't work like that. Now... Let's back up a little bit. Let me just turn this over because I can I can chill them. How many minutes we got here? Twenty-eight.